All right, so today my goal is to figure out if this one and a half inch Beavercraft detail knife is worth its weight in wood. And also to figure out how it carves, right? Just how it moves through a piece of basswood and uh, if I uh, recommend it to beginners. Oh, and I forgot to mention that uh, I'm gonna be testing it out on a little uh, whittle project. And so uh, you'll get to see how I make this as well. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm really excited about this, and I'll tell you why. Beavercraft, um, of course, not a sponsor, is a very cheap, affordable knife company that is readily available. In other words, they're selling on Amazon, they're selling online, and they're easy to get. They're in stock. And I've heard quite a few good things from you guys in the comments section, and so I didn't really know anything about them. They've just... Uh, I just thought they were some cheap Chinese crap um, knives, but come to find out, it's very neat that they're made in uh, Ukraine. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, project at hand here, which is uh, testing out uh, their premium wood carving knife. Now this is called a detail knife, which is actually a pretty sizable knife, an inch and a half. That's kind of my favorite size of blade to begin with, so to me, this is probably gonna be closer to the size that I would use for roughing out as well. It's my first time seeing the knife, so I'm excited to, oh, the sheath came off. Okay, I'm actually impressed. Looks like we've got the knife here. I'm impressed, well, <laughs> band-aids. Hopefully that's not going to come in handy, but uh, that's cool they did that. I'll set that aside. Okay, so the first thing I'm impressed about with this blade is it is actually a Scandi grind. Meaning that the, uh, well, for the most part, meaning that, that, that most of the blade is ground to one bevel. So that's actually a, quite a nice uh, design. Feels pretty dang sharp, actually, coming out of the gate. I mean, not perfect, yes, but pretty good. Surprisingly good. Let's try it out. Handle shapes, um, I don't know, a little reminiscent of a flex cut with a belly widened belly and then that kind of thin pointed end which uh, I don't know it's not my favorite I really don't love it to be honest but yeah actually this thing is cutting pretty well I'm surprised hmm Yeah, again, I really am not loving the handle shape. It's a little bit hard to flip around, but it's not uncomfortable. It's not like a, a big turn off, something that I can't get past. In fact, in fact, I could pretty easily probably take this down. Wow, it's actually quite a nice blade. So it's thin um, at the tip, which is important because that means it can glide through the wood pretty easily. Uh, but the other sort of rare quality of this blade is it's actually pretty thick at the base, which means I'm confident that it's gonna hold up when I push on it a little bit. And that also means it will flex less, which I'm a personally, uh, which I'm personally a big fan of. So we're just taking this thing out for a drive. I think they call it a test drive. <laughs> so far, it's actually sharper than I initially thought. It's cutting through the wood pretty easily.
I like the uh, the polish on it. It's actually surprisingly good. And so it glides through the wood easily. And I just wanted to remind you that the, the point of purchasing this uh, at this time, this knife is $12. It's a $12 knife. That's astounding. I mean, that is just literally half the price of the flex cut competitor and uh, you know I can't say just yet as to the durability of the blade but of course if this was a really cheap steel you'd already notice it this early on in the project so it's decent we know that but we'll see how it is after we put it through the paces I'm gonna carve a little face here. So you can see the first cut I made was establishing the nose and then coming up establishing the uh, bridge and then the hairline. And uh, at this point I've got a pretty equal distance between the hairline, the bridge, and the nose. So it's kind of a, a third if you will. And then we'll give him a mustache so he doesn't actually don't have to worry so much about all the other stuff. Keep this nice and short. <laughs> so I'm coming down from that hairline I created earlier. Let's see if I can get a little bit tighter on it. And uh, creating that beard, beard line. All right. Per usual, if you're doing this, you should be wearing a glove should be wearing a glove. Alright, the mustache coming down, give him a little curve, follow that line. And the same thing here. So I made a couple of uh, V's here. Let's see, a couple of uh, V cuts in here, like so. Boom, 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 and then I'm cutting them out because I want the mustache to sit on top of the beard. So, okay. Yeah, this is a surprisingly decent knife. I mean, it, I'm having a hard time. Uh, believing it actually how decent it really is I mean it's just uh, it's a really decent knife I don't know what else to say for the money I would say if you're starting out in carving and you're looking for a decent knife this is a really decent knife very very happy with it for the for the amount of money I put into it and I think you sort of lower your expectations when you spend less on an object and uh, when it pleases you it's all the more a, a positive experience so I'm just taking a little hollow here in the, uh, in the side of his head here and then same thing here sorry my camera frame was not there so a little hollow on this side and a little hollow on this side creating that kind of S movement see that It's holding up really well. I don't see any lines appearing in the wood at all. So the steel looks to be tempered. <laughs> really surprisingly decent so far. Shockingly good. And this is actually a fairly decently hard basswood. This is a northern basswood. This comes from 
north of me actually, and I'm in Michigan, so it is a harder bit, harder piece of basswood. I'll be dipped. Put a little groove in the bottom of his beard. So, a little separation in there. Shockingly decent so far. Uh, I don't really have much a uh, reason or many occasion to use the uh, scoop knife. This is certainly not the appropriate uh, time to use it. So I'm not going to get uh, myself injured just for the sake of the video. But uh, this is a surprisingly decent blade as well. Seems to be holding up so far again, as I mentioned. So. I'm really surprised. Very nice blade. Classic triangle cuts for the inside corners of the eyes. <coughs> the eyes. Excuse me. Okay. I'm moving fast here because uh, I've been connecting those two triangle cuts that we made.
Okay, well, I'm not going to get too carried away here, but, uh, got a little character whittled out. And uh, just still kind of dumbfounded. Kind of shocked at how decent it is. It's a definite go for me. If you're thinking about getting one of these or if you've been on the fence, I have to hand it to you, Beavercraft. This is a shockingly decent little knife. I mean, there's just not a lot wrong with it. I mean, I can get over the fact I don't love the handle. Like I said, I can shape that. I don't know about, again, longevity is an issue that I can't really attest to. It seems pretty firmly glued in there. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys might have your uh, own opinions on them if you've used them for a while. Sure that, I'd love to see it. But my first impression is this is about as sharp as it was when I started this project. So um, there's little doubt in my mind that it's uh, of a, a decent quality steel, which is a big deal for this price point. Um, so I'm not upset at that. I can tell you that uh, it's a very basic kind of handle. It's not well finished. It's not anything fancy. But twelve dollars, guys. You have to remember <laughs> this. This is like this is insane how cheap this is. Like, where in the world are you going to find a decent carving knife for twelve dollars in 2023? You know, I mean. Yeah, so I'm sorry I'm dating this video, <laughs> but yeah, it's just uh, it's a really impressive price point. Really impressive price point. Okay, I could play with this all day, but. I've had my fun. I think. As I toss the piece. So I went around and got his, uh, his nostrils cut in, a little turb cut, and then like so, and then cleaned up around that. Same thing here. Went around and took a little bit out. And uh, yeah, just kind of putting some lines in the hair and can put some eyes in this piece if we want. Just do some little jabby simple eyes. Get them piercing out into the open. It's kind of a nice simple way of getting eyes in if you're trying to simplify the project. Get them kind of looking as though he's peering out. Kind of spooky looking, but kind of cool at the same time. Anyway, that's all, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, if you're out there in the world of uh, carving, maybe you're just starting out, maybe you haven't carved anything before, and you're watching this and you're thinking, I could do that. This knife, Beavercraft, detail knife, inch and a half detail knife, um, surprisingly, really, really decent. Um, gosh, I don't have any complaints other than just the, the handle is a little awkward. I really like the shape of the blade. It is a straight blade. It's not a hooked, uh, skewed blade, uh, which is fine. That's great. And, uh, man, yeah, you could shape the handle up a little bit and make this, uh, kind of a perfect little knife for 12 bucks. Come on. You can't, you cannot beat it. The hook knife's pretty sweet as well. Uh, 18 bucks at this time but I'm sure it'll change. It's a great tool. Pick it up, guys. All right. And yeah, of course, I'll link both of these in the description below, along with some little basswood pieces. And folks, you know the drill. If you're interested in learning more about wood carving, specifically on carving realistic human faces, uh, I have an online school that you can see projects scrolling down as I talk. Uh, it's a monthly subscription, and each month I add a minimum of one, usually two or three projects that revolve around, again, realistic faces from the beginner, intermediate, and advanced categories. So content being produced for each of those categories 
for those of you who are in the beginner range, it's appropriate. Also the intermediate and advanced range as well. There's hopefully enough content uh, for everyone. 70 plus videos at the point of creating this. And of course, that's numbers growing. Check it out. Thanks again for watching, guys. I sincerely appreciate it. And I don't take it for granted. Um, much love.